Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and what in the heck are we going to do in this video? We are going to describe and calculate the relationships between partial pressures and total pressures for an ideal gas or mixture of gases as described by Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now that was a lot. Break it down a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna explain Dalton's law of partial pressures. How do we use it? What is it good for? Two, we're then gonna calculate the partial pressure of a gas in a mixture of gases using Dalton's law of partial pressures. And then we'll also calculate the partial pressure of a gas collected by water displacement. The collection of a gas by water displacement is a really common way that we will collect gases in the lab. I brought my good friends, B and Bob, to help us out today. All right, so first things first, what the heck is Dalton's law of partial pressures? It is simply a law that states the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the component gases. This law can be represented using a awesome equation that you see there on your screen. It's also in your notes and it's also on your formula chart. Essentially what this formula says is that is the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the partial pressure of the first gas plus the partial pl pressure of the second gas plus the partial pressure of the third gas plus the partial pressure of however many other gases you have. Again, keep in mind when we're talking about partial pressures, we're talking about the pressure of just the specific gas in that mixture. Now, in the lab, we are often going to collect gases over water um, in a process called water displacement. It's important to keep in mind though that the gases we collect this way are not pure. Uh, there is one other gas present, and other gas is always gonna be water vapor. But just like other gases, water vapor exerts a pressure and lucky for us, and we have uh, some pretty serious looking reference charts to give us the partial pressures of water vapor at different temperatures. So a classic way to apply Dalton's law of partial pressures is to determine the partial pressure of a gas that we're collecting in the lab. And we can do that by ensuring the atmospheric pressure matches the combined pressure of the gases in the collection bottle. Um, and then by using a reference table for the partial pressures of water vapor, we can easily determine the pressure of the individual gas that was collected. All right, so to help you better understand what's going on here, I've got a reaction vessel that's gonna produce a gas. I've got my water trough and a collection bottle, which are both filled with water. This red arrow here is representing my atmospheric pressure. So as the reaction proceeds, gas is gonna bubble up through this tubing and into my collection bottle. As I continue to collect that gas, the gas is going to displace the water. Again, keep in mind that the gases that are in your collection vessel are the desired gas from the reaction, but also some water vapor, simply due to the fact that you're collecting it over water. All right, now to effectively use Dalton's law of partial pressures here, we need to make sure that the atmospheric outside of the collection vessel matches the combined pressure of the gases inside the collection vessel. And we can do that by making sure that the water level inside the collection tube and outside the collection tube is at the same level. And as you look currently, uh, the two pressures, the atmospheric pressure outside and the combined pressure of my gases inside um, are not the same because there's a difference in the water level. But as I continue to bubble in uh, my gas from that reaction, I continue to displace the water until the water level inside and outside are the same. At this point, I can make the assumption that the atmospheric pressure outside the collection vessel is the same as the pressure inside the collection vessel. Again, you don't wanna to collect too much gas or the pressure inside of your collection vessel becomes greater than the atmospheric pressure outside. So just keep in mind that the atmospheric pressure outside of your collection vessel can be used to help determine the partial pressure of the gas that you are collecting by using the reference list for the partial pressure of water vapor at different temperatures. As always, a quick reference in this case to that beautiful image that we saw in your notes for collecting a gas over water. And also a huge shout out to this high school that has an insanely long name from Concord, Massachusetts.